Hey, what's happening everyone? Pragmatic Addict here. So, completely different video that I've ever done. Uh, I'm going to be exploring a website. Now, this website, the reason why I'm doing this video, uh, it's like 3 in the morning by the way, perfect time to do it. Uh, so, Long Legs, one of my most anticipated films of the entire year, probably second behind Maxine. Um, I was watching Dead Meat's uh, little channel update videos that he, that he does every every Monday. He uh, stated that there was there's been a viral website that the marketing for Long Legs has released. Uh, someone that uh, follows me on social media also sent me this story, which I did call the number. Uh, I was gonna save that for a video, but you know, with these kind of numbers promoting movies, it's usually just like an automated voicemail or something, which it was. It was this long legs uh, doing his creepy noise, little Mickey Mouse shit, promoting the movie. Um, but Dead Meat was saying that there is a website called The Birthday Murders, I believe it is. And uh, in there you can find a bunch of secrets. There's a lot of coding. Uh, there's a lot of lore to like the story as far as like setup. Not too spoilerish, he said in his video, but uh, you know, just enough to promote the movie more. So, as someone that has covered pretty much everything Long Legs, uh, it'd be juvenile for me not to do a video like this. So, uh, let's do this. We're really doing this. Kill them lights. Uh, don't look at my butt. Ooh, spooky. Well, not spooky enough because I have my light on from my computer and everything, but uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get into this. All right, so it was called what was it called? Um, the birthday murders. Oh wait, wait, wait! Bloody disgusting. All right, the birthday murders viral marketing website launches for long legs. Neon has been absolutely slaying the marketing game for their horror output this year, and they're kicking the Long Legs campaign, campaign into high gear with one more month until release. High gear! We've gotten seven posters, more now, uh, seven trailers, we got a billboard, we got a number to call, god damn. Uh, the in-universe website details the victims of the serial killer known as Long Legs. So yes, uh, Long Legs... Uh, Cause I was wondering what that was like, like why the movie was called that. I was like, in in the very first teaser reaction I ever did, I was like, is he like collecting all of his victims and forming them into some fucking spider shit? Is this some tusk bullshit? But no, um, this is actually what he calls himself. I don't know why. Uh, described as a Satan worshiping psycho who has terrorized families throughout the Pacific Northwest for nearly three decades. Uh. Poke around and stay for a while. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to get the whole spoilers from this thing, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into the website. I have no idea what to expect. This is a long legs website. Man, this reminds me of the days of like Cloverfield. Cloverfield did this shit. Whoa. The effects of this movie are ridiculous. Okay, so there's there's a lot to get into here. Okay, that's the very bottom. We're gonna look at this one at a time. Let's go to home. For nearly three decades, this Satan worshiping psycho has terrorized families throughout the Pacific Northwest. A bloody trail of bodies here in the great state of Oregon attests to the depraved savagery of this one of a kind serial killer. With over three dozen victims that we know of, Long Legs is one of the most prolific mass murderers ever to have graced the region, and his gruesome endeavors are the stuff of nightmares. Ooh. At first, all of the killings appeared to be straightforward, uh, straightforward murder suicides, the handiwork of average men who suddenly snapped and slaughtered their wives and children. Wait. All of the killings appeared to be straightforward murder suicides, the handiwork... Okay, so he's gotten worse as far, like his murders have gotten more sadistic over time, I'm guessing. The series of eerie coded messages, can I click that? No. Series of eerie coded messages left at the crime scenes indicates indicate that someone or something is influencing these horrific crimes. The cryptic letters are signed by someone calling themselves long legs. Buckle up and hold up tight, tune back in Monday, June 24th. Are we gonna have to do a second video? Uh, 
yeah, these just look like crime scene photos. Uh, well, this is home, so we're not going to uh, tune back in Monday just yet. We're going to go to the victims. The victims with 38 kills to his name. God damn. Longlegs has torn apart the lives of 11 different families throughout the Beaver State. His victims were good people, honest fathers, decent mothers, innocent little children. They were church-going, God-fearing, upstanding members of their community. These families did not deserve their awful fate, and he behooves us, and it behooves us to take a moment of silence to honor their memory. All right, the Applewhite family. Happy birthday! Oh damn! Did he kill? Did he attack this family during a birthday party? Ooh. Along along with their nine-year-old daughter Teresa. Harland and Patricia Applewhite of Damascus, Oregon, appeared to be prototypical American family. Harland, a certified public accountant with the firm of Chesney and Cipher, and Patricia, a homemaker, first met while attending Easter services at St. Boniface's Roman Catholic Church. They married in 1955, and shor shortly thereafter, Patricia gave birth to their one and only child, little Teresa. No, that's not, uh, uh, what's her face? Michael Meadows' character, because her name's Lee Harker. Uh, little Teresa was said to have a smile that could light up a room. A student at Primrose Lane Elementary, Teresa was fascinated by butterflies and caterpillars. She hoped to be an entomologist when she grew up. Unfortunately, she would never have the chance. Grim. On the night of July 14th, 1966, the Applewhites were killed in their home, on the 3400 block of Rhododendron Street, if I pronounce that right. Uh, I'm just gonna say really quick, with like, with like a dead meat really promoting this film, really backing it up. With them saying it just from here alone, that like there's been like 38 murders. I'm like, God damn, dude, that kill count for long legs is going to be insane. I mean, I don't know how much they're gonna show of the murders. I don't know if they're gonna show like 38, like, you know, three dozen families on screen just getting murdered by long legs. I don't know how deep into the lore or like how, you know, far in they're gonna show of that, but goddamn. Especially there didn't appear to be any mystery as to the circumstances. Wait. Yeah, okay. Wait, cir mystery to the circumstances, are they saying like long legs? I don't know. Uh, Cluckhamas, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce any of this shit. Uh, County Sheriff Roy Wicker ruled the killings a murder-suicide committed by Harland. Okay, so he was framed for it. Yet no one, family, friends, co-workers, could imagine Harland would do such a thing. They characterized him as a loving husband and father, a model of stability and sanity. Harland's sister, Mrs. Eveline Dahl, stated, I never believed he did it. Not for a minute, not for a second. Wow. I want to see how much of this the film is going to capture. Because goddamn, just reading this, just this alone, this could just work for a fucked up novel. But goddamn, putting it on the screen, how insanely beautiful and wicked I'm hearing that the movie is. I, I, I can't wait to see what they're all going to do with it cinematically. What made the crimes even more inconceivable was their grisly nature. Patricia and Teresa were killed with an 8-inch carving knife. According to medical examiner Dr. Hugo Portis, the perpetrator completely severed Patricia's jugular, then proceeded to stab her more than 20 times in the chest and abdomen. The little girl was tortured before she was killed. Uh, her internal organs were removed post-mortem. Wow. Sheriff Wicker is on record saying, This was the goriest crime scene I've ever witnessed, adding, Whoever did this was ruthless. Law enforcement authorities determined that Harlan acted alone, slaying his wife and daughter, before fatally turning the family's 12-gauge shotgun on himself. What I want to know is, like, obviously, like, they're hinting that, like, the murders are connected, obviously, being log legs, but, uh, I wonder, like, how, like, why he, uh, selects certain families. Like, is there something about the families that makes him, like, choose them specifically? Or is it just, you know, a killing spree that he's doing? All right, so yeah, these are obviously crime scene photos of the, of this family. <laughs> I 
I wonder what's up with the birthday. I wonder if it'll talk about that. The thing that didn't add up was the letter, Wicker re recalled. Police found a letter inscribed with sigils affix affixed to the refrigerator. The note was written in a cipher of strange exotic symbols. We didn't have any luck cracking it. That's a job for me. That's for sure. Wicker remembered. The handwriting didn't match Harlan's or anyone else's for that matter. The only part of the message that wasn't written in code was a neatly handwritten signature at the bottom. Long legs. Frustrated in their attempts to decipher the letter, law enforcement officers assumed it wasn't important. Years later, when the case was reopened by the FBI, the coded message would turn out to be a key piece of evidence. The Clover Family Marshall Clover and his wife Carol lived in Echo, Oregon with their 10-year-old daughter Miranda. According to all who knew them, they were a happy family on June 20th, 1968. This is 1968. Was this 66? Okay. So this is two years later. Their happiness would come to an end. Their white single shingle house on Waxcap Way had always been kept in immaculate condition. Neighbors called Carol a first-class homemaker. The house was so drenched in blood they had to tear it down. Wow. <laughs> Said next-door neighbor Merlin Block. Couldn't get the stains off the floor and walls. Umatilla County Sheriff John Squires ruled the killings a, a murder-suicide perpetrated by Marshall. Why are they always blaming the fucking... the fucking, uh, husbands? God damn. A successful travel agent. There was something about it that didn't sit right with me. State, uh, stated Squires years, years later. Wow, years later. So, yeah, Longlegs has really just been on the run all this time. I knew Marshall personally, and I just couldn't reconcile him doing such a thing. Not as brutal as all that, certainly. Uh, the murders were committed with the same savagery as the Applewhite killings, though this time there was an additional element, satanic imagery indicative of a, of a devil worshipper. So, where in Oregon was this again? This is an echo, and the other one was somewhere else in Oregon. So it's all through like the state of Oregon that Longlegs is just doing all this, all this nonsense. The signs were all there, Squires commented. The pentagram written in blood, the number of the beast, it was some pretty demonic business. Yet Father Melvin Childress of St. Casimir's Church affirmed that Marshall had always been a good Catholic and added that he had severed, or he had served as a sexton for several years. Everything about the case baffled authorities. As with the Applewhite case, a letter was left on the refrigerator written in coded letters. At the bottom, the message was signed in ink, long legs. We didn't know about the Apple Applewhite case, Sheriff Squires recalled. No one put them together until years later when the feds got involved. Hmm. Okay. I want to know what had them, like, linking them. All right. The Pendergast family. Thomas Pendergast has been acting strangely for the past, or for a few days before it happened. According to, the, to his employee, Arlene Stenhouse, he was nervous and kept mumbling something about his youngest daughter not really being his daughter. Pendergast, aggressor, and his wife, Loretta, were the parents of two young girls, Rhonda, 10, and Louise, 9. They lived in a white two-story house on Beaverton Road in the town of Sisters, Oregon. All right, so now we're in Sisters. Uh, the, the, the town? According to all who knew them, they were a quiet, happy family. Thus, it came as shock when Thomas decapitated his wife and daughters with a cleaver on the evening of August 9th. 1969 so this is another year Deschutes <laughs> I don't know what that says uh, County Sheriff Scott Wampler called the crime scene a horror show one of the bloodiest I've ever seen the bodies were lined up next to each other on the floor in the in the dining room the cause of death in each case was determined to be exsanguination exsanguination what the hell Exsanguination. What does it mean? The act of draining a person, animal, or organ of blood. Ah. Or severe loss of blood. After killing his family, Thomas walked into the garage where he shot himself in the head with a Remington Model 1100 12 gauge shotgun. It seemed pretty cut and dried, Wembler said of the case. Yeah, so it seems like the fathers are always the last to go and they always end up dying with a shot or with a shot to the head. Uh, the only thing that stood out was a, was that damn note. A letter in a pink envelope was found in the refrigerator. It was written in a coded alphabet. The message was signed. I don't see no code. Oh, long legs. 
If we had known about the other letters, maybe we could have put something together. Maybe we could have stopped him, Wambler said regret, regretfully. Instead, his offices his office ruled the killings a, a murder-suicide, Jesus, carried out by Thomas Pendergast. I want to know how they're finally going to catch up to Longlegs, like, as far as Lee Harker, you know, and, like, Longlegs being that uh, Silence of the Lambs kind of story. As with the Clover murders, uh, because that's what they said it's very reminiscent of. So, like, as far as, like, her confronting Longlegs being in the fucking uh, interrogation room with them, how does it all happen? I hope this doesn't spoil that. As with the Clover murders, pentagrams were found on the walls of the house. Wait, the Clover murders? Okay, okay, that's right, Clover family. Yeah, that was some weird diabolical mess, stated Wampler, recalling the harrowing scene. The extreme carnage and, well, all that devil stuff it was pretty disturbing. Uh, the Wormwood family. On the night of April 18, 1970, another year later, Lester Wormwood called authorities to report finding his brother Curtis and his family in their home on Marigold Drive in the town of Gaylord, Oregon. Curtis, 39, a technician with the Moltenma, Mol 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 whatever, County Waste Management Div Division, and Eugenie, 38, a nurse practitioner at Grosvenor Ho Hospital, has been married 15 years. They met while undergraduates at Oregon State University in Corvallis College, sweethearts and best friends. They married shortly after graduation. They would go on to have three daughters, Julia, 14, Patricia, 11, and Cynthia, 9. Uh, for those that live in Oregon, like right now, are these all like, like the the college and shit and like the hospital? Are these actual locations? That must be pretty cool to be a fan of Longlegs living in Oregon. The Wormwoods were remembered as the wholesome family next door. Curtis, a native of the Umpqua River Valley, loved to hike the Calip Calipuya Mountains. Eugenie was known to volunteer at the local Humane Society. No one saw it coming when Curtis butchered his wife and daughters with a carving knife. It's always the carving knife, too. After murdering his family, Curtis killed himself with a single shot to the head. Lester Wormwood, who found the bodies, took his own life six months later. Damn. We knew we were dealing with something none of us had seen before. We're called Coos County Police Sergeant Garth Franklin. All the victims had been stabbed to death with the throats filleted. Yeah, filleted? <laughs> Open all the way across. B. According to Franklin, uh, so the killings contained a particularly brutal level of cruelty. Detectives found themselves puzzled over who would have wanted to cause harm to any of the victims. The walls of the house were covered in pentagrams painted with blood. The number 666 was drawn on the floor. The satanic connection was unmistakable. A coded letter was detached, uh, was discovered attached to the refrigerator door with a plastic magnet shaped like a tiger. The letter was signed, Long Legs. Cryptogram made me think of the Zodiac thing, uh, Franklin stated, referring to the Zodiac killer who operated in Northern California in the late 1960s. But this wasn't like that at all. At the time, we believed whoever killed them was let into the house. Either that or it was someone who lived there. It didn't take long for law enforcement to determine that Curtis Wormwood was responsible for the murder of his family before he took his own life. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I disagree. Uh, we had no reason to think it was done by anyone other than Curtis. No other suspects, no accomplices. Jack Fimple, an animal control officer working in the area, recalled seeing a white station wagon, possibly a Chevrolet Nomad, in the vicinity. It's a pretty quiet neighborhood, he declared. Anyone who doesn't belong here tends to stand out. <laughs> Wait, that's the car that's being driven in the, in the trailers that we've seen. <laughs> the Hesse murders. This is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one. On the morning of March 12, 1971, police responded to the white Dutch colonial house of Eldritch Hesse and family in Oysterville, Oregon, after Eldritch failed to show up for work the previous day. Uh, when officers arrived, they described smelling a distinct foul odor emanating from the house. Inside, they found the bodies of Eldritch, wife Roberta, uh, and nine-year-old daughter Mary Kathleen, each stabbed over 30 times with a long serrated bread knife taken from the family's kitchen. So what I'm thinking is like, well not what I'm thinking, but like what I'm wondering is like Lee Harker, uh, Michael Monroe's character, she was a survivor from one of the, from like, 
you know, she's a survivor of this guy, right? Because he, like, killed her family. I'm wondering where that's going to take place. Because I've been told that the movie takes place in not in the 90s. So, yeah, this is obviously, like, 30 years later where she grows up as an, uh, as an adult, you know, an FBI agent, uh, tracking him down and everything. So I wonder when her family was victim to him. Uh, where was I? Uh, Eldritch, an air traffic controller, had been a reliable employee. He hadn't reported for his shift on March 11th, nor did he call to inform his supervisor that he would be unable to come in. Calls to his house went unanswered all day. What the police found shocked them. Roberta, a hairstylist at the Razzle Dazzle Salon in Sunny Ridge, had been beaten so badly her face was unrecognizable. unrecognizable. Mary Kathleen's hand and hands and feet had been removed. The bodies were discovered in the family's basement. Eldritch was found in the master bedroom, the victim of a self-inflicted knife wound. Well, he didn't get shot in the head this time? Forensic examination showed he had killed himself within an hour of his wife and child. The, fa the family's pet parakeet was found decapitated in its cage. No, not the bird. The following weeks, the neighbors on Susla Road became fearful. Many decided to arm themselves. Some suffered a... Wait. In the following weeks, the neighbors of Susla Road became fearful. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, they're... So, the, so what, everyone just got, like, really... So everyone just kind of, like, put their guards up after this horrific uh, scene. Many decided to, ar to harm them or to arm themselves. Some suffered adverse psychological effects. Reports circulated that of a tall man with long hair loitering in the neighborhood. Rumors held that a satanic cult had been involved. Police soon ruled that out, as well as several other bizarre theories. In the absence of any solid leads, the crime was ruled an apparent murder-suicide. Eldritch Hesse was presumed to have killed his family and himself in a fit of sudden, unexplained rage. No clear motive could be established. We don't know why he did it, said next-door neighbor Earl Pomeranz. It just didn't make any sense. Eldritch and his family were good Christian people, claimed Father Benedict McComas of Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Church. Hundreds of mourners attended their burial service, he's, he added, and none of them could understand why Eldridge committed such a heinous act. McComas told the Oysterville Gazette, It may have been a devil thing. That's the only way I can make sense of it. The front door of the house had been adorned with a large inverted triangle carved directly into the wood. The mark of the beast, 666, was etched into the back door. On the refrigerator, a coded message was found in a pink envelope by local police. The letter was signed long legs. Lieutenant Cold on the Oregon coast. The tragic event occurred at the family's residence on 5050 Main Street. Oh, I can't read it all. The death of Jane Doe and her children is a tragedy and our thoughts and prayers are with the victim's family and friends. The investigation is ongoing but the police department has stated that they believe the suspect John Doe had a history of violence. Tin back on Monday, June 24th. Ah, I gotta know more. Oh, I can click it. Of course I do. What are you downloading? What are you downloading? What are you downloading? Enter the password. Oh, don't do this to me. Twenty three nine twelve twelve. Twenty three nine twelve twelve. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What if I decipher this code? All right. I'm gonna need the lights on for this one. All right, so we're gonna write down this code and I'm gonna decipher it. All right. Long ways has got me have this fucking thing handy. All right, dash V dot dot. Whatever that symbol is, I don't know what it's called. V. Backward C dash S another symbol. Okay, U looking thing dash C dash this thingy little horseshoe looking fuck. Uh, V dash that one. That one. 
So that's the code I got. We're gonna we're gonna try and decipher it. All right. So let's see here. We're gonna do uh, long legs uh, coded alphabet. Forgot what I typed in. Whatever ago when I first saw it. I know it was on Reddit though. Oh, uh, where's the alphabet? Here it is, here it is. All right, so let's see. So we got an upside down T, which is N. Okay. And we got the two dots, which are, where are they? There they are. So I, so N, I, and then Another upside down T, so that's another N. And then we need a dash, which is E. Oh, I got nine. Nine circles. No, it's not circles of hell, because the last word doesn't have two of the same symbols. So nine, uh, it's a V. Where's the V, where's the V? It's a C, so nine. I think this one is circles. Nine circ. Yep. There's the I. The horseshoe thing should be an R. Yep. R. Nine. Yep. Another C. Um. Let's see. Are we on another dash? Sir. Wait. Nine sir. So L should be the backwards C. Yeah, so nine circles. Assuming this is S, yes. So we got nine circles. Uh, and then we got like a little U looking thing, W. Nine circles, W. And then another dash, so that's E. And then another or a C looking thing. So let's find the one that looks like a regular C, which is D. And then another dash, so that's E. And then the horseshoe looking thing, is that S? Yes. And then the V was C. Nine circles we discovered? Uh, nine circles disc. And then another E. Descend. Oh, nine circles we descend. So that's the code. Maybe that's, what is that the password? <laughs> Let me try it. Let me see. Let's see, let's see. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I'm right. All right, so I had to, uh, <laughs> this, this is awful. I know how bad this must be for you guys as a cliffhanger, but how do you think I feel? As soon as I was like about to type that, that, that uh, <laughs> message in, I had to go and do something. Uh, I ended up getting carried away. This is like a day later. But um, we're going to uh, get into the file because <laughs> while I was away, I came back real quickly without even like recording. Just couldn't wait. I typed in <laughs> the uh, um, nine circles we descend. I didn't know how to type it because I was like, is there spaces? Is it caps? Also, <laughs> to make matters even more stressful, you can't see the password. It's not one of those things where it like shows a password. You just gotta type in all 20, you know, characters, man, and hope that you got it right. And uh, yeah, I did it all lower cases, nine circles we descend, one word. It got me into a file. So we're gonna check it out. Also, I hope you guys can see me. Uh, I actually got the mood the mood right. I live in Arizona. This is the first day of monsoons. It's storming out, it's thundering. I got the candle lit, turned off uh, my light, made the computer scream. Uh, just light enough so we could, you know, I could still make a video, but uh, we got the mood right. Yes, yeah, so as you can see here, guys, this is the file. 
I have no idea what to expect. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 things that we can click. And they say TIFF image. I don't know if that means Toronto, Toronto International Film Fest. I don't know if this film screened there. Maybe these are like behind the scenes stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but they have a lot of numbers on it. 2, 21, 20, 4, 5, 1, 28. I don't know what any of this means, but we're going to click them. First one, guys. What do we got? Oh, um, well, there's the shotgun that they were talking about how people, like the husbands or the fathers, would, like, turn the gun on on themselves. Now, remember, I haven't, like, I, I've been away for a day. <laughs> so, I'm not the most fresh, <coughs> but <laughs> how do we, how do I go back to more <laughs> Stuff. How do how do I get out of here? What is this? Oh, woo! How do I go back? I can crack a code, but I can't go back. Uh, how do I go back? Mom, <laughs> what do I what do I do? I'm 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 just gonna <laughs> click on the file again. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this lets me view all of them. So this is the one that we viewed already. What's this one? Wait, what does that say? Damn it. What does it say? It says one... <laughs> no, that's a seven? Seven, fourteen, sixty-six. I remember one of the dates in the <laughs> thing that we were reading said 66. <laughs> so I think that these are all just stuff relating to the murders. All right, and then this one. <laughs> oh my god. God, <laughs> is it sick that like the more I see these photos, the more I can't wait for the movie? Looks like another gun blast to the head. It's an interesting angle. Yeah, these look like just crime scene photos. Oh god, that is gnarly. It's so dark and detailed. Like right here it looks all brown. Right here it looks all fresh. Right here where it's all black. Looks like strands of hair. Maybe some guts, some brains. Damn, Mr. Perkins. <laughs> What's this one? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, wait, there's a number three and a bullet. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> is it <laughs> bad that I was expecting something, like, really wacky if I cracked the code? Like, maybe free tickets? Maybe an exclusive trailer? <laughs> no. It's just, uh, I mean, this isn't bad. I mean, like I said, like a few minutes ago, I'm, this is getting me more excited for the movie, but like, damn, I wanted to feel real special. All right. That's, uh, this is more of that other photo we got because I remember the shoe and the gun. Which angle is this from? Is this the floor or is this the ceiling? It's got to be because right here there's nothing. It just looks kind of funky. Like why does it look like it's going up or something's dripping down? Huh. Really interesting camera angles. <laughs> okay, these are just two different shots of that. <laughs> what is this one? It looks like the same photo. <laughs> is that all? Alright, so that's all we got for right now. Uh, but, again, like it said, tune back in on Monday. So we will definitely be doing a follow-up video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this is very different for me to do. Very fun. Can't wait to get, it, get more into this website. But, uh, yes, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Comment down in the comments below uh, everything that you thought about this, guys. I'd love to talk with you guys about this stuff. You know how we are with long legs on this channel. 
I'll see you guys soon. Take care.